Okay, now for a different kind of video altogether, we're going to have a quick look at the new Pico catalogue. I think it came out in May, uh, but I may be wrong. Uh, but anyway, it's the new catalogue they've produced for this year, um, and I bought it just to have a look at it. I mean, to be honest, I'm not expecting there to be that much in there that interests me, um, but I quite like looking at catalogues anyway, so what the hell, um, I thought I'd get it. So we'll specifically, we'll just be looking at the things really that are relevant to Engage, but there's other things in it as well, there's a few kind of tutorial articles um, and other bits and pieces advertising the magazines that the that Pico produce, Continental Modeler, Railway Modeler and um, whatever else, their guides, um, but we'll flick through to the Engage section. So it's probably quite a useful catalogue to get for people that are new um, to the hobby because you do get all the information about the different track pieces that are available so if you're planning a layout or you're new you can see what you get. This is code 80, starter sets. Um, I'll try and focus on things that are new. Um, there's not that much is the uh, spoiler I'm afraid. Um, in terms of track components anyway. So all the different points um, and then code 55 which has got a smaller rail profile this is what I've been using on my layout although I have had code 80 in the past um, and the interesting, that I, interesting thing that I noted was that none of these points here have got unifrogs, they're all electrofrog and um, I think some of the crossings are, uni are, are, are insulfrog as well so the only one that is unifrog um, is the medium radius ones here so it doesn't look like they've updated the others which doesn't bother me in the slightest because I prefer just the standard electrofrog ones really um, but there we go, so then other things in the catalogue, track setters, different um, accessories that, again, more for beginners. So the thing that interested me the most really was the wagons, because Pico have um, started updating some of their wagons, and there's a separate guide that comes with the catalogue, which I'll have a look at in a minute. And the ones that they've updated at the, um, so far are the 5 plank and 7 plank and they are, if I'm not wrong, they're both 1923 Railway Clearinghouse design uh, wagons, um, which is not the area that I'm particularly interested in, but I was just, took a general interest to see what Pico had done really, because most of their other wagons are designs that date back a long time. I mean, some of the designs date back to the six, late 60s and 70s, so some of them are really old. Um, all the different kits, I couldn't really say anything new. Some of them were previously Parkside Dunder's um, kits. More stuff on the kits. So one thing here that's new that people might not have realised yet is you can buy metal wheels um, that drop in to the, the, your older Pico wagons because the older ones come with plastic wheels which are not obviously great in terms of running quality and spreading dirt around your layout. So you can now buy the metal wheels. Um, and that does interest me because I've got lots of um, merry-go-round HAA hoppers um, and things like that possibly might replace, although it would be quite expensive to buy a lot of wheels. Uh, Conflat containers, um, other kits, other wagon kits here, and um, bits and pieces. So nothing that I noted that was new here. And again, kind of classic buildings that have been in the range for a long time, really, um, that people probably would have seen and nothing new. The only new thing on this page were these red benches for your platform, but all the other kind of classic accessories. And then Ratio, um, they're plastic kits that are now owned by Pico, the brand is. Um, quite like this. Um, wartime kind of era signal box with a flat roof might have a look at that in the future 
But again, it's mostly classic things that people will have seen if you've been around the hobby for quite a while. The only new thing on this page were some platform lights, non-working platform lights, um, and nothing else particularly. Um, various different accessories that's all quite old. And that's the end of the Engage specific section within the catalogue. I mean, it's a massive catalogue. There's uh, 200 and something pages, um, which obviously I'm not going to go through because it would be a long video. Some of the bits, some of the accessories and the electronics and stuff will obviously be relevant to Engage if people want to go down that road. And obviously some of the more like general articles, instructional videos and so on um, will be useful. So yeah, that's the main catalogue. You also get a leaflet about static grass, which is not that exciting. Although, having said that, there's a kind of instructional thing on the back there. I mean, clearly they're trying to sell their products, but it, it might be useful. And then the, the most important thing, really, for engagers is this separate um, leaflet about their wagons. It says on the top there, collect them all. I'm not sure I'll be doing that, to be honest. Um, probably set you back quite a lot. Um, so on the front are the brand new tooling ones, and these are ones that have got metal wheels, and they're obviously more fine. They're totally retooled. They've got a proper nine-foot nine, nine foot wheelbase. Um, and these are the five and seven plank uh, wagons in private owner liveries, and then the different grouping companies and some British rail ones. Um, and we'll actually have a look at one in a minute that I've got. Um, I've actually bought one to look at. The one I've bought is this um, NCB one here because they lasted um, longer in NCB use than the others um, up until the 80s, I think. Some of them were knocking around. So anyway, lots of different private owner ones. And I suppose the key uh, announcement really is these new ones at the bottom. These are the next ones that are going to be tooled up uh, by Pico to modern standards. So you've got an iron ore tipler wagon, which I presume is a 27 ton iron ore wagon, um, although it doesn't particularly specify the details of the wagon. Uh, you've got a pig iron uh, wagon in the middle, which is a little bit, like it looks a bit like a plate wagon really in some ways, but anyway, it's one I've not very familiar with though I believe some did get used later on in their life to carry coil um, so that might interest me I would be more interested if they did them with tops codes in a more kind of 70s or 80s guise really so we'll see what they um, come up with and then you've got the ubiquitous 16 ton mineral wagon here um, and again if they can produce them um, at a competitive price and they've got the same quality same standard as other manufacturers, then you know they'll probably be onto a winner. Um, especially things uh, where you need to build up a block train, you know, such as the mineral wagon. And then the rest of the leaflet is really advertising their older wagons. And as I said, some of them date back a long way. Um, and some of the underframe details and such are a bit coarse, really, by modern standards. But going back to the olden days. It was only really Pico wagons and then a few Lima and Trix things that people had to choose from. Um, and now they're not particularly expensive, compared, certainly compared to um, new wagons from Batman, Grain Farish and others. So some of them are not bad really. The decoration on the Conflats looks quite nice, um, for example. And then on the other pages, these are all old as I've mentioned, so there's nothing new. Um, that people into Engage won't be familiar with. And then if I just flip it over, you've got their HAA wagons, which are still some of the better ones. These are not quite so old. They're more, well, I forget when they come, they were produced, but anyway, they don't date back to the 70s, put it that way. Um, they have got plastic wheels, though, still. I've got absolutely loads of the Pico HAA wagons. And, I mean, the underframe, the buffers are not great, but the actual overall look of them, once they're in a block train, you know, I think they're okay, basically. Uh, you've also got the later ones that were converted for China Clay, or I forget, or perhaps they were new builds for China Clay, but anyway, they're similar to the HA wagons and uh, various other things there. 
they're still advertising their system of magnetic uncoupling which is probably a bit old-fashioned now really and I know most people have, who want to have hands-free uncoupling have probably gone for the Dapol easy shunt and I know I have but anyway they're still pushing it um, and yeah that's the end of the leaflet really so it's I suppose the main thing really is the new tooled ones and the ones that are coming next so now we'll just go and have a quick look at the new tooled wagon in real life I've only got one because as I said I'm not it's not really my era um, um, and I just bought this NCB one just to really see what they were like I think it was it was roughly £15 um, and I got it from AGR models quite a while ago um, I haven't I'm not particularly building an NCB layout although I may add a kind of industrial preservation society and I have got the NCB shunter Hunslet, Hunslet shunter from the Engage Society so that's the only reason I went for that one I mean it's the least colourful obviously mostly people that go for these probably want all the different private owner liveries but that doesn't particularly interest me I'm more interested in like the BR livery or the NCB one in this case so let's go and have a look at the actual wagon okay so welcome back we're back on the layout now and this is the new Pico wagon NCB wagon just being shunted out by a Class 04 uh, it's a 7 plank wagon as I mentioned 9 foot wheelbase and it's in NCB livery which was obviously quite basic with just the two kind of white lines on it so the reason why the Class 04 is shunting it and not the Hunslet shunter from the Engage Society um, I'll explain basically it's because on the uh, Engage Society Hunslet I fitted the Dapol easy shunt magnetic couplings and on the Pico wagon I haven't uh, changed them over um, and one of the issues is that the NEM coupling pockets um, are the wrong size uh, which Pico have acknowledged I mean it doesn't particularly bother me I could use a tiny drop of glue to glue an easy shunt in there but I probably will not bother because I only really use easy shunts at the front or the end of a train and only on selected wagons uh, but in this instance it's been a bit annoying um, I mean obviously I could have changed over the Hunslet to a normal one uh, but I didn't do that uh, just for the purposes um, of saving time really so that is the wagon I mean you can't really see it in its full detail there if I just move over here a little bit um, hopefully you can pick it up I mean the planking and everything looks quite fine the underframe is obviously a lot better than the older Pico wagons it's got metal wheels those are the pockets that are not quite not quite the right size nice buffers you know it all looks quite fine and I don't have a seven plank wagon from another manufacturer to, to compare with because it's not you know it's not really my era but I do I just found this Farish one that I have got just to give you an idea really I suppose of the modern standards that you expect now in terms of like detail and you know you can't really tell um, you, you know the difference you know the sides for example the sides of the wagon on the new one the new Pico one look fine um, so yeah basically they're comparable really I mean some people have said that the brake lever is a little bit chunky I mean I'm not massively familiar with the real prototype to say really but I don't think it's really that noticeable um, so I think really where you've got um, the same wagon being made by you know two or more manufacturers probably comes down to price really if the detailing is of a similar standard I would probably go for whichever one is the better better value and then I suppose it depends what liver is you know you are most interested in, interested in for your own layout so yeah there's another modern standard that's a price some kind of private owner garish one there um, just to kind of show there's not really a difference that jumps out in terms of quality so that's the new Pico wagon 
um, which I've already showed you this leaflet, but that was the one I got there in the top, um, just about in the top left. So another difference you'll notice with the new Pico wagon is it comes in a different type of box. It comes in a box like this now, which is more square, quite durable. Um, so that's all. That's all fine. The older ones used to come in a box like this with a bit of foam and everything. This one had a merry-go-round wagon in of some sort. Um, forget now. So yeah, that's one of the key differences that you'll notice. So now, if we just have a look. Um, I just move the class 4 back a bit and onto this train here. I don't think it's coupled, but let me just check. No, it's not coupled, so I'll just intervene. So basically, I don't have many Pico wagons, and that is because they tend to be, as I've mentioned, older and the detail is not quite you know up to modern standards now, and there's so much choice available from Graham Farish, from Dapol, and now from Revolution, Rapido, Sonic and others. So I've only really got this short collection really. So the, you, obviously once they're on the layout you can't really tell, but if I take one off the track, I'll just take this, this um, one off the track here, you can probably see the underframe is a little bit chunky by modern standards. They've got non-NEM couplings using their LC system and the buffers are just not particularly well detailed either really um, and I'm not particularly sure what prototype this one's supposed to be even um, so then you've got kit ones as well and the good thing about the kits is they're quite cheap so you know if you're not very good at painting and adding decals and everything they're a good one to do so this is a plate wagon kit that I've just painted olive um, they're de it's still got plastic wheels again I might change those out but they're dead easy to go together same kind of thing, another plate wagon but in a yellow colour. I uh, can't remember really whether, the, I think these are all plate wagons but it, it's been a while and then also I've got this Satlink one which I've mentioned previously. So slightly better than these much older Pico wagons, slightly newer really, are these merry-go-round wagons. Um, the blade's falling out there but we've got one here that's got this uh, canopy on and we've got just a normal standard one here with a brown cradle this one here with a yellow cradle these are still quite good I mean the buffers the under frame probably could be better um, and obviously the wheels on this are plastic but as I've mentioned you can change those out if you want to um, so I, end, I know that other manufacturers are looking at bringing out an, a more up-to-date wagon the problem with that is if you're trying to collect 36 of them and you've already got 36, either Pico, Trix or Farish or something, it's obviously going to cost you a hell of a lot of money to then replace them all with a more modern spec HAA. So I'm probably going to stick with these Pico ones for now and possibly buy metal wheels because once they're all in a train, you know, from normal viewing distance, you're not going to really notice too much about some of the more coarse details. Um, you're mostly really going to be looking at the tops and also the you know the sides, the body, and everything. So yeah, that's my uh, very small collection of Pico wagons. Um, but as I mentioned, they've just not really got much in their range um, that has appealed to me. Um, but that might change because I'd be interested in. Iron ore tippler, especially if they did them when they were used in departmental use and they were kind of given a different code with the Z, forget what it was now. Also, the pig iron wagon, um, it's not massively useful to what I'm trying to model, but again, if they make one in a later guise, it's something in. I like collecting wagons anyway, so you know, I might be tempted. And obviously, 16 ton mineral wagons, um, it be interested to see whether they do both fitted and unfitted ones um, and again what liveries they bring out if they've got some that are suitable for the kind of late 70s 80s I might be tempted although I have got quite a few Farish ones so it depends really on the price um, and the quality of the new wagon so yeah that's a very short um, demonstration so what I'll do is I'll just put the put the Pico wagon back on 
and then if I get it going the right way I can shunt it back. I mean in terms of running quality it's hard to assess because I've only got one so I can't see what, how it operates you know, in a train of loads of Pico wagons but as you can see I'm shunting it at a reasonable rate there. It's gone over some medium radius points. It's now going over cobbled track if that makes sense and it's not derailed. I'll just bring it out again at a bit of a higher speed. Obviously I wouldn't run it this fast but just to check so it seems okay in terms of running quality. It's very light, but obviously a four-wheel wagon in N-gauge is going to be light, isn't it? So, um, so there we go. That's my very quick review of the Pico catalogue, in particular the wag N-gauge wagons, and a quick look at this NCB wagon, um, which I'm quite happy with. Um, you know, you, you can read... If I, was, if I were to zoom in and had a better camera, you'd be able to read all the printing and everything. Just trying to have a look at the doors. You've got a kind of the end door there. Um, again, I'm planking on the inside. So yeah, overall it's it's um, a good addition and well done Pico because although they're obviously mostly known for their track, it's good to see them committing to engage and uh, introducing more new products and updating some of their older wagons. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.